Lord in prayer. While we're uh, in prayer, please let us remember uh, Sister Bates as she's uh, as she's uh, talking about things, how we can bow away the way of vacation. Amen. And also let us remember Sister Ruthie and Sister Virginia, and also Brother Clarence. Amen. Remember Sister Ruthie that the Lord continues in the process in her body. We're continuing prayer for Sister Ruthie and Brother Clarence. Amen. Are there any other unspoken prayer, prayer requests? You make them known by the raising of your hand. God be acknowledged. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to come before your throne of grace, receive mercy and help, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, to bless us to wake up this morning clothed in our right minds with a reasonable portion of our health and our strength. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the angels you had in camp the battles, Lord, keeping us safe from both dangers seen and unseen. As we travel over the dangers, highways, and byways and made it to this house of worship just one more time. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel right now in the sanctuary, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the, for the, for the word that we're about to receive, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the anointing, Lord, that is in this house that will destroy the hill, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, all these prayer requests, you know them all by name. You know our very down, sitting, uprising, going in and coming out, you know, the very love and men of all situations. Bless and move in each and one of these prayer requests, Lord, according to your will. You said in your word, by your stripes we are healed, Lord. Lord, you are the comforter, the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, Lord. And Lord, be careful to give your name, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Yeah.
the church cleaning committee said, please, no eating uh, in the sanctuary. Amen? Amen. Let us all bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you all for this opportunity to give unto your kingdom. Lord, we ask you to bless all those who give, bless all those who desire to give, and then give in the future. Jesus said we pray. Amen. 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 I brought my money to serve the Lord.
hands that was just being waved, the individual would stand up and testify. Somebody. Praise God. We're moving into the next phase, but I like the last statement. I mean, I like the testimony, period. But the Lord is going to answer all of our prayers. Amen. We can take that to the bank. Like she said, he may say wait, he may say no, and he may answer. But the bottom line is, all of our prayers are going to be answered. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Praise God. Would you clap? Would you clap? Would you lift your hand? Whatever feels comfortable to worship the Lord.
Thank you. 
look bad and good. Uh, I really appreciate, amen, that uh, one day I made the proper choice. I preached a message some time ago, maybe I'll preach it again. What in hell do you want? I'm going to be very honest with you. Amen. And a lot of the seminaries where people go, amen, to study the word of God, but a large percent of them do not believe there is a hell or a heaven. Amen. I just allow you to actually do this text there. They describe there is a hell. Amen. And there is a heaven. Amen. Choices. Jesus told a story about a very rich man who lived for himself and he ignored God. Many are called but few are chosen. And if there's anyone that you don't really want to ignore, and that is God. There are times in raising children, amen, uh, your kids may try to get your attention about something, amen, and you stir them right in the face, but you ignore them. You know, there are times when the Lord is speaking to you through a man of God. Amen. The man of God is the messenger, the under-shepherd. And you are just simply ignoring him because you're living unto yourself and not living unto God. But after death, he experienced the consequences of his choice. Eternal separation from the Lord. Go ahead, preacher. Go ahead. I don't want to go nowhere where the Lord is not found. Praise God. Amen. If I get my automobile, I want the Lord inside my automobile. When I lay down at night at home, I, do. I want the Lord in my house. Come on, shout unto the Lord. I want the Lord everywhere with me. Will you clap your hands up, Lord? Thank the Lord for his goodness. Oh, yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus described him as one who lived, amen, richly every day, providing for himself the best that money could buy, but giving little to the poor at his gate. And I want to tell you something, amen. The reason why this man had so much is because God blessed him. Hello? Because God blessed him. You see, when you look at this particular story, amen, you know, God has a way to bless people. And the reason why he blessed them, so he could bless others. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's important to realize that man, this man wasn't judged harshly by God because of his wealth. He simply ignored God's calling on his life. Hello. You know, I remember coming into the church, and, amen, and there were some things that I had to go through, some struggles, amen. And, but uh, I remember reminded of this magnificent choice that I made in, Amen. I'm, I'm thankful for the choice that I made to repent of my sins and to be baptized in his name and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, it's, it's 
It's a wonderful thing, amen, to know that you're saved and you're prepared for the rapture. Or if you die in Christ, that you're prepared to go to heaven. Will you clap your hands unto the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father is not opposed to our success, nor was the man separated from the Lord because of his lack of charity towards others. Amen. He did not deliberately harm others, but rather overlook those in need and focus on himself. I'm reminded of such a story about Esther and how she struggled within herself to obey Mordecai. She was in such a position, amen, in the king's palace. Oh, yeah. Yes, he was. He was. But Haman was out to destroy her people. And there would have been bad consequences if she just continued to just think about herself. But she finally got to courage. And let me tell you something about living for God. You will have to have the courage to repent. Amen. To get right with God. It's going to take some courage. To make up in your mind that I'm wrong. And if I don't get right, I'm a bust hell wide open. Oh, yeah. It's about choices. Right. Hmm. Praise God. Listen, you know, choices that we make even about man our times. Yeah. The consequences. It's something about choices. It makes sense. God is about choices. Adam and Eve in the garden, they had a choice to make. And because of the bad, bad choice they made, they got ran out of the garden. Don't expect to make heaven your home someday because you continue to make God is a just God and a merciful God. But guess what? If you have made bad choices all your life and never repented, amen, because he's a just God, you ain't going to make heaven your home. That's right. That's right. That's right, preacher. Don't get fired on me. I'm preaching right now. Come on, let's love the Lord. Thank the Lord for truth. Hallelujah. This man was spiritually short-sighted. Yes, he was. And I appreciate, amen, that Esther overcame that. And because she overcame her short-sightedness, she saved her people. Something came out positive. Because she made the right choice. rich man mistake was that he prepared everything for the body but nothing for the soul. Oh, yes. Come on. Tattoo. Uh -huh. Don't look at me strange. Uh -huh. I preach against it. Uh -huh. Amen. Pierce in the body. It's right out of the book, folks. That's right. Praise God. You see, our culture practice a similar style of living. Worldliness. Acquiring material riches, satisfying self, is the primary pursuit of many. In our world. 
I got to look good. Hello? <laughs> the adversary will tell you don't look good. You need something to add. But I'm going to tell you right now, when God made you, you are beautiful in the sight of God with nothing hanging on to you. You don't have to tattoo it. You don't have to pierce up. You are beautiful. Somebody shout out to the devil. I am beautiful.
things about behavior, folks. Some folks will say, is the gospel for homosexuals? Uh -huh. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Amen. Yeah. God is just upset about the behavior. That's right. Yes. That's right. When you get saved, you need to clean up your act. And walk straight, talk right. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. You see what happened to the prodigal son? He got caught up in bad behavior. And he made the wrong choice. And he ended up in the hog pit. It was a consequence to his choice that he made. But the beautiful thing about the story, he woke up. He woke up in the hog pit and he began to make a resolution. I'm going back home. I don't care if I'm a servant, but I'm going back home. Come on, thank the Lord for his goodness. Hallelujah. And the father saw him far off. Amen. And ran to him and kissed him. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord. Turn back to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Relationship. Yeah. Our eternal destination depends on our decision about Christ. be honest with you. Yes, I can yes. go to bed at night and be at peace with God yes. even if he will take my life. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. It's something about when you have a relationship with God you're connected there's no such thing about fear of death. Despite what our culture thinks, life is not about us. It's about having a relationship with the Lord. Later on, David, after he had sinned, he made the right choice again. He repented. And he got right with God. Amen. Even though he had failed God. Notice what happened. Even to his son, Solomon. Because of the bad choice that David made. Look what happened to Solomon. The wisest man that ever lived. That's right. I don't know. He turned his back on God and lost out with God. You see, there's nothing wrong with making bad choices here and there. But don't get stuck in your bad choices. Make right choices. Establish a relationship with God. The best is yet to come. Yeah. When you clap your hands unto the Lord, the relationship with the Lord, the best is yet to come. Praise God. My, my, my. Whoever accepts Christ's gift of salvation, Acts 2 38, repenting of his sins, getting baptized in his name, being filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what? When you do that, you get the opportunity to spend eternity with the Lord in heaven. Praise God. No mortgages, no car payments, amen, no lying, 
no cheating. Come on, let's thank the Lord, hallelujah. I want to go there someday. We can clap your hands into the Lord. I want to make it there someday. But it's about the choice that I make here. Joseph was a dreamer. He loved God. He had a relationship with the Lord. And because of his relationship he had with the Lord, it seemed like trouble is following him. But he kept on loving God, regardless of the trouble that followed him. He kept making the right choice. I'm going to live for God. Regardless of the circumstances, I'm going to live for God. Whether in prison or out of prison, I'm going to live for the Lord. Joseph was blessed by God with the spirit of his earth. That's how he ended up becoming over Egypt to protect all the food. Can you imagine his responsibility yes. of managing all the food for what, seven years? Right. And the people were able to be fed. Mm -hmm. He was quite a leader. 
He can discern some things. And he got his discernment from the Lord. But because of his relationship with God and his choices that he made in life, he saved the people. Not only he saved the Egyptians, he saved his own family because of the right choice that he made. Would you stand and clap your heads in the world? Thank the Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah.